Hello and good evening. This is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com, and uh, today it's time again for Dax Fridays. And uh, today we're going to talk about Switch. So without any more delay, let's begin. We are going to do our Switch example with Excel. And here I have a simple table where I have product IDs, product names, product categories, and then price and quantity and then uh, country. So we go to manage and uh, switch it is basically um, another way to write if statements like you would do in Excel. Uh, I'm going to start writing an if statement in case you haven't seen it before and then we will go through switch. I don't know if switch gives you better performance than if. I think I've read it somewhere, but I'm not sure. So if you know that, uh, let us all know in the comment box. Okay, uh, we're going to do first an if statement. And as an example, uh, we are going to imagine that we want to add discount to each uh, product category. So if road bikes, for road bikes, we want to have a 0.5 discount for mountain bikes, 0.6 and for city bikes, we want to have 0.2. So if we would write a um, if it's statement, it would look like this. So you have if product categories roads, road bikes, then write 0.5 if it's mountain bikes 0.6 and if it is city bikes 0.2. Enter. And you see that this is exactly what it does. So it found where road bikes are and adds 0 0.5, 0 0.6 or 0 0.2. So this is exactly the same as Excel. Now the switch function allows us to do exactly the same thing but with a better or easier syntax. So let's write the same thing using switch on another column. So here we have um, equal and then we write switch and then we take the column that we want uh, which is product category there we have it. And then remember Alt Enter and here we write road bikes. And then 0.5 Alt Enter Mountain bikes zero point six alt enter city bikes enter and this is our switch discount so as you can see, of course, it gives us the same values because it's saying the same thing, but instead of writing product category all the time, you just write it once and then you refer to just the things that you want, the conditions, if we would say so. And it, this makes it easier to read once you learn how to use it. I, I thought it was very confusing in the beginning, but well, after you start using it, then it start. It becomes actually easier to to write. Let's do another example. What happens if uh, we would like to class classify our discounts? So if uh, the discount is less than zero point two, then it, we want to classify it as low discount. If it is lower than zero point well, between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5 is a medium discount and bigger than 0 0.6 is a high discount okay 
So how do we write that with switch? Here is the syntax. We start and write switch. Then we write true. I will let you know why in just a second. And then alt enter. And now we said it was switch discount if it is less than 0 02 then we want to call it low discount now between 0 02 and 0 05 we want to call it medium discount so how do we write that this is the way we're going to write product switch discount less or equal than 0 0.5 it is a medium discount I'm going to tell you why that works in a second and now the last one alt enter so bigger than 0 0.6 is a high discount. So, um, so here we get the results. Let's call it the discount type, something like that. So, so. Why does this work? Um, the key to this is uh, true. So what true does is when it starts evaluating, if it finds the first one to be true, then it adds the value and doesn't come back to it. So for example, is this here, is this 0 0.5 lower than 0 0.2? No, so it doesn't write anything. Is it 0 0.6? No, 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 no. 0 0.2? No, 0 0.2? No. And then we have a blank. Blank is like zero. So it says, okay, this is. So it gives it a low discount. And then it starts with the next one. Is it less or equal to 0 0.5? It is medio discount. So it doesn't go. It continues to the next one. It writes it. Then it starts 0 0.6. Is that less or equal to 0 0.5? No, it continues. And then 0 0.5 medium discount, medium discount. So then it starts with the last one. This has already been covered, so it doesn't look at it again. And then 0 0.6 high discount, so it fills the gaps with the rest. So true returns the first result where the condition is true, and then it doesn't come back to it. So just as an example, if we would change the order of these, let's say that we put this one there. I, and we put that one there. What happens now? There will never be a low discount, right? Because Though those have already been classified as medium discount, so when it comes to the low discount, there's nothing left to cover because they only have the 0 0.6 left, and those are not less than 0 0.2. I don't know what that got written there. So, so I hope you understood the, what uh, True is actually doing. Now, as you can see, uh, when there is blanks, it is actually giving you a value and you might want that. Uh, but for example, I prefer that if it's a, an error or a blank, just, just to know so you can correct it. So I would rather have a blank here instead of a value. D of course, this is cancel zero. And in this case, it is a medium discount, but that is not really what we want. So what do you do to cover that? Let's uh, 
do an example with the column price. We're going to categorize pricing and in price we have both zeros and blanks. So if the price is zero, of course it's incorrect and if it's blank it's also incorrect. So we don't want to have a category if that is the case. And this is how the formula would look like. So product data is zero blank. Now blank it counts as zero so that would be blank and then um, low pricing, medium pricing and premium pricing. So let's see what this does. And this is exactly the um, the results that we want to get. So if you have blanks, then you know that something is wrong. Let's uh, call this um, switch with blanks. You will be able to download this file, so don't worry about that. So now the last example, uh, can we use switch with measures? And the answer is yes. And in this example, I'm going to show you a measure that uses switch that would change the currencies of the pricing depending on the country. If it's Europe, the prices will be in euros. If it's the US in dollars and so on. This is how the measure looks like. I'm not going to write it because it will take quite a long time. So this is what it's saying is if uh, the country is Europe uh, format total revenue with euros, if it's the US with dollars, India with rupees and so on and so forth. So let's see this in action. So now this is a measure, so we cannot check it here. We have to go into the Excel. Close. So here I have already prepared a uh, power pivot table that has our product and the countries. So the only thing that we have left to do is to add our measure here into values. And as you can see, when uh, China is the country, it gets formatted with the right currency, the same for Europe, India and the US. So this is quite uh, a nice trick. You can use, remember you can use switch both for measures and calculate the columns. This is all for today. If you like the video, let me know by liking it. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, let me know on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And subscribe, I publish Power BI videos every week. Have a nice evening. Bye.